So every single day I, I go through charts and I turn around, I go, wait up, man, where is the value? Where are the ranges? Where are still charts coming off the bottom that we can take advantage of? And again, welcome to access a trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everybody had, had a really good day. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So what, what did the market do after an encore, right? After yesterday's completely mentally defeating day, right? And I can speak for a lot of people who felt and looked like I did. As you can tell here, my mood today is a lot better. Um, I'm feeling better. I don't sound like I'm, I'm on my last leg. I don't sound like I I'm, I'm have one foot in the grave because that's what happens when you have a day of just pure technical, orderly, organic order flow versus the, the nonstop spin cycle of news and events that we had yesterday. And again, if you, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, yesterday was the day that if you could put every horrible thing attached uh, to being a trader on the mental side, and, and really snowball and put it in a blender and, and drink it, that was yesterday, right? Uh, incredible uh, news headlines all over the place, demonstrations, riots, this one, that one, just completely overwhelming. And today was almost like national, national no downtick day, okay? Uh, everything that the market was, when the market got sold off yesterday and, the, and that initial news of the chaos and the rioting and all that good stuff, today they just basically picked up uh, where they left off, and the market just went absolutely nuts today. You had the NASDAQ composite of 300 points. Uh, you had Bitcoin going nuts. Uh, Tesla will never have another down t day again. And obviously, I hope some of you guys understand I'm being sarcastic. But maybe you won't. Who the hell knows? So we, we had some incredible, incredible aggressive moves. The pivots uh, basically didn't down tick. If you look at TDOC, uh, if you look at Square, if you look at Roku, just absolute monster moves. And today you, f you saw another group join in. So it wasn't uh, the EV names that were the value today. Again, because they were gone a long time ago and Tesla keeps on pulling them up. There was a new name, right? It was the, it was the uh, triple D stocks. You had, you know, had DDD come out with some aggressive earnings. I mean, look at the stock. It took the whole group with it. And in this type of market... You don't need a lot of, you really don't need a lot to get a group going. Uh, VJet, I mean, look, look at these moves. I mean, just absolutely incredible moves. And the problem with this tape is, well, again, I, I try to use the word problem as kind of playing devil's advocate. Again, we, we don't want to trade uh, with rose-colored glasses on. We want to kind of see what's not working because, again, we want to be, we want to play defense in case there is a rug pull. And again, as we've seen off and on for the last two, three weeks, there's been a rug pull. Again, we're still enjoying the upside. There's plenty of value in the upside. There's a ton of euphoria to the upside. Until people stop chasing stocks, you're going to have the same type of environment. But again, we're just const we're just trying to be uh, adult about it, a little bit more responsible about it. Just make sure that we are trading with eyes wide open to make sure there are no pockets that we're seeing that we could get pulled. And that's it. That's all we're trying to say. Just try to be careful, just kind of be conscious of what potentially could happen. The problem area in the market continues to be the big mega cap names, right? You had your big moves in Square, you had your big moves, uh, you know, big move today in Square and big move today continuous in Roku uh, and Tesla. But the names, again, just really not participating. And again, even though Facebook was up five bucks today, it's still below supply. If you look at uh, Netflix, it's still below supply. If you look at Apple, it's still below supply. Hopefully it'll get out tomorrow, but it's still below supply. Boeing's still complete garbage and had a chance today to reclaim uh, some daily supply and it looked good for like 30 seconds and then blah, 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 bomb. They sold the stock off. Some bad news came out after the close. They sold the stock again. Even NVIDIA, who two days ago, right? I loved the upside. I was waiting for confirmation that never came. It got sold off yesterday like, like they were trafficking human beings, right? To the bottom of the range, only today to move, move it right back to the top of the range. And again, it's a step away from going back to the top of the range to challenge it. So just an incredible, incredible market. Um, a lot of things all over the place, and it's almost overwhelming. You know, I, I speak to a lot of my friends, and we always, and maybe we're old, right? Maybe we're getting old, but you know, when there's like two, three stocks in play, 
it's much easier to concentrate, at least for me. You know, I'm 40, shit, I'm 46 years old. I started when I was 25, right? So maybe it is for me, like when, when I'm concentrating on a video or I'm try, concentrating on a Netflix or a Zoom, whatever the case would be, it's so much easier to focus. When you have 22 EV stocks going and different alternative stocks, I feel like my concentration level is all over the place. And I'm, I feel like I'm tilted to the side when I'm sitting, just a lot of stuff. Maybe, maybe you guys are different, but it's, in my opinion, it's just so much easier to concentrate on like two, three stocks compared to like 25 different stocks that are random that you don't know what's going on. And the moral of the story is it's very, very hard to trade them because again, you don't know their tendencies, you don't know their personalities, you really don't know their average range. The only thing you know is some guy, some random avatar on social media say, buy a dude, it's going to the moon. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But again, that's kind of where the market is. Um, and, and again, in every single day, we, we try to find that value, right? You know, again, what we've been talking about for months and months now, and, and especially the last three weeks, you know, don't chase anything that's high. Right? Like, I'm not buying Tesla tomorrow. And again, not, I'm not saying it's not going to go higher. It's already up 20 after the close. It's going higher. Okay? I'm not buying it. The only reason I'm not buying it is because, Jesus, it's up like 230,000% in the last 24 hours. That's the only reason I'm not buying it, just the value. But yes, I acknowledge it'll never go down again. It'll probably go to 1,000 uh, by tomorrow. Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Right? But again, remember, the deliveries are 0.00% off in Guam. Right? That's the bear case. So anyway... So every single day I, I go through charts and I turn around, I go, wait, man, where is the value? Where are the ranges? Where are still charts coming off the bottom that we can take advantage of? And again, the names like Roku continue to be good. And, and again, we'll, we'll go through the pivots in a second. You know, Roku's strong and Square is good, but where's the value, right? Like, where's my value? I started going through the list tonight and I said, well, TDOC had a monster move and we had this pivot today uh, in the morning. We'll talk about that in a second. And I said to myself, well, where can, can there be sympathy in these stay at home stocks, right? And I start looking, you know, Docu starts looking pretty good. Peloton starts looking pretty good, right? Zoom still looks like crap, right? It still looks like crap, but it doesn't even know that the market's open, doesn't know that the market is in euphoria right now. It just still looks like crap. But again, I'm trying to find the names that I believe that could at least have a shot that if they come out of the range, at least the institutional money flow will start to go in there. Um, and I started looking at some other names and, and Apple, you know, maybe it's a day away. You know, you can see here, it kind of keeps on getting rejected here uh, off the 10 day moving average. You know, maybe it's a day away, maybe it's two days away. But again, I'd love to see Apple just kind of break this downtrend and kind of wake up. Again, not meaningful option flow on it for the last day or so. So again, maybe Again, we're looking for some sort of signs that these things could wake up. NVIDIA is just a completely different case. Yeah, you know, two days ago, you know, we talked about this thing, reclaiming the 50-day moving average, had a really good move. I had two really good days on the video Monday and Tuesday, and yesterday it just died. It just completely died. And just and look at it. Yesterday it just closed right at the bottom of the range. And today, da 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 it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. So maybe NVIDIA can wake up in the next day or so, start reclaiming these highs and ultimately attack this top of the range that started off, you know, started at in, in the early part of November. So there's a lot of ifs, right? There's definitely a lot of ifs, but the one thing that I definitely know I want to avoid are names like Alibaba, right? This is, this is, this is a, a grenade. This is literally a, a, a uh, a minefield that you're about to step into. There's so much news on a day-to-day -day second. Uh, one day they're, they're going to delist them. The one day they're not. It's it just so much violence going on in this name. Just stay away from this thing. It's just, it's just, just the prudent thing to do is completely stay away. But again, the moral of the story is every single day, guys, again, we acknowledge the market strong. Okay. We embrace it, right? Uh, I think, I think, old, I think there was only one pivot today. Uh, that I put on the short side and it never confirmed. So we're, we're bullish. We're absolutely bullish. But again, it's very, very important to understand bullish doesn't mean reckless. Bullish doesn't mean close your eyes, you know, uh, you know, pedal to the metal, just go, right? It means that we are still taking advantage of a very good market. We're just trying to get as prudent as possible and look for the stocks that, again, are just trying to get above those levels and are giving us a lot more meat on the bone. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, a lot of really good, strong, strong moves, um, like really, really strong. Um, and, you can, and you can see, you could go down the line. This was the only one that, again, you know, Boeing had a shot today. It really did. And you know, so I talked about this thing. It really needed to put a base above, you know, above this whole range here, uh, roughly around 216. And it traded like 216 for like, 
for like three seconds. And then next thing you know, da 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 da, just, just came back in. And then after the close, just, you know, just another he headline. Again, this is what we talk about toxic names, the Alibabas, the Boeings of the world. There's just so much surrounded these stocks. Not that they're not great companies. I acknowledge it that Alibaba's awesome, right? How could it not be awesome when they have these Alibaba days that do like 10 billion in like 30 minutes? They're awesome companies, right? Boeing, as far as I understand, will stay in business. But as far as, you know, being a shareholder or trading these things, especially right now, they're just, again, I think there's better places that you can put your money. But again, it is what it is. Uh, so let's talk about some upside pivots, some really aggressive moves here. Um, TDOC, number one, it got upgraded today, okay? Um, 211 reclaims yesterday's Bollinger Band. 213 was a massive macro area. Any close above that is bullish. Forget about any close above that. It reclaimed that 211, 213, and TDOC just went Tesla esque, right? Can you call it Tesla esque? Again, obviously, I'm exaggerating. But, you know, this thing took out the 211, took out 213, closed right at the high of the day, uh, 229. This thing looks like it's going to, you know, looks like a shot against the 240 tomorrow. Obviously, uh, the value there is buying it on any, on any dip into rising 60-minute support. Or, again, for experienced traders, uh, watch that red to green play. Just remember, red to green, and, and again, a lot of people don't, for some reason, always get this. But red to green, it, it's not a pivot. Red to green is just momentum from the previous uh, from the previous day. The pivot was, you know, 211, 213, you know, 230 right now is more continuation. So just, just, just really understand that. Um, square went ballistic, uh, 233.50, 234 needs to build. Here was square, just went absolutely nuts. So it took out this whole 233.5, 234 level, uh, went to 240 and change, big move there. Uh, CRWD went, you know, pretty well as well. 215 needs to build on crowd. Uh, here is CRWD, right? 215, took out this whole channel here, 215, uh, went to 222, still looks higher, still looks like it wants to take out the 52-week high of 227 in the next uh, day or so, so that looks still strong. You notice there's no Tesla here, right? There's, there's a reason for that. Uh, Roku, again, continues to be a monster. AACQ, I've been watching this thing for like a week. It's probably the only SPAC hasn't moved, but still watching, still watching. Uh, Roku 352 rejected twice pre-market needs to reclaim for more. Yeah, it got more. It definitely got more. Uh, here's the 252, right? Here's the 252 pre-market, right? And it just absolutely went nuts out of the gate. <laughs> I mean, look at the move on this thing. Just absolutely nuts. Went to 380. Uh, just, just absolutely, again, no down ticks. Uh, Snow was the only one that I actually had on the downside today, just never confirmed. Thank God, because it's one of the biggest movers uh, to the upside. So uh, that was that. Uh, here was an ARC name that um, uh, Kathy Wood, again, Kathy Wood is the one who uh, talked about Tesla should go to 4,000 uh, when the stock was like 200 bucks. Ha ha, Kathy, you're crazy. 4100 hold my beer uh nndm again she was a buyer of this thing again part of the net the part of the whole uh triple d group uh eight seven needs to build again buyers were coming in for the 1250 calls i still like this thing this thing looks higher to me here's the 870 right it confirmed the 870 went to like 950 this thing still looks like it's going to the 1050s again i'd like to see some more uh more continued re repeat buyers coming in the space especially in the same uh, area of the 1250 February to see if this thing could actually uh, make a bigger move. Uh, AVTR, not a big move yet, but it still looks pretty good. Uh, 29 needs to build. Uh, here was AVTR, right? Here was AVTR. Took out this whole big range of 29. Uh, again, not a big move. Only went up about 40 cents. But again, not everything could be a super big move. Uh, also, I caught a move on, uh, caught a move on, what was it? Baidu, Baidu. Uh, we caught we caught that move we, on that headline that um, what the hell is the headline that they're eventually going to get into the EV space even if they're not going to get into the EV space do you blame any company these days for putting out a PR and say hey by the way we're going to get into the EV space of course uh, nice spike on uh, nice spike on Baidu from that three. 11 area into the 312, 313. It's very, very fast trade. I was pretty happy with that. Uh, and then DM, I caught a piece of that as well. FSOY, not a big move yet. Uh, 86 needs to build. But again, some pretty good, um, pretty good January 29, uh, $100 call buyers coming in. It still needs some work to do. I, you know, There's still a lot of supply here. For, for me to really get interested in this thing, it's going to need to close and reclaim this 94 area. So it's a little bit far away. But 
Again, baby steps. Uh, as far as baby steps, like a lot of these other names as well. Uh, a couple of the smaller names I like. They still haven't really uh, done anything yet, and I believe that is it. So you know, tomorrow is Friday. Um, you know, it, it's so it's so weird to say, but you know, Fridays are usually uh, the most aggressive days because you get a lot of uh, expiration, right? You get a lot of uh, you know super aggressive betters on weekly expiration. But again, how much more aggressive? Do you want this market to be? I, I think people will go into like withdrawal if this market is ever like you know flat on the day. You know, again, it's just absolutely nuts. Uh, I still like these. Um, I still like these um, uh, the 3D plays. Maybe you get a dip in the morning, wash out. Maybe go red to green as well. So there's, there's a lot of names on the docket. Again, the key is trade what you feel comfortable, and the most important thing is continue to trade responsibly. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.